Welcome back everybody to Disco Elysium. We are in this abandoned part of the house behind the mysterious door in the bookstore. And we are just exploring right now. We found this computer and we put in this cube, but we don't have a password, so we won't get the information that we want. Now we have these two boards and a door. Let's let's work our way from right to left. There's also stuff we can investigate there. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Is it a... Is it an elf with a beard and a sword? Some of the writing has faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of welkins. You make out autumnal candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Okay. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin, and even ether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. Who are all those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? Maybe. You should adopt one of those welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a welkin. One of the welkins, towering among the rest, appears to be different, however. Examine the welkin, this is important. It's Vara Hamira, a high welkin, his face white and scarred like cracked marble. This is clearly a welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-welkin races will be purged. Oh boy. The Haldor, the Tworg, the humans, and even headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with welkin, green welkin, dread welkin, and the high welkin to rule them all. Uh-huh. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little welkin creatures. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. <laughs> it's funny because he's in a game. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? And are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Do you think they're teasing another game they're working on with this, maybe? One of them is a welking supremacist. Mm hmm Political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Yeah, it does have a nice beard. Look at this. And cool ears. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. Yeah. And for what? All gone. Inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms dead trees grown in under the snow mm, snow entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore there are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds abandoned in a storm animal corpses in the dark carcasses and bones mm. you see primitive oil rigs built into glaciers boreal dvorg yurts under the snow great mammoth like beasts of burden Whoa, mammoth! Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Like eggnog mm. or morphine. Whoa! A much needed respite from our own world. I'm with you with the eggnog part, but morphine? Come on, sir. A pinned postcard reads The heat death scenario. A desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wirral becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like Sprint, Daily Minimi, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Minimi stands for a mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Keep reading what happened. As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. A chunky cap. Okay. <sighs> okay, chunky cap, Redeem. Let's go. Looks like they didn't make it. The lieutenant looks at the frigid ice fields of nothingness. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says... See the prod schedule filament for details. Inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partly legible, but 
you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, Wirral untethered, and heat death of the universe. I wonder if amongst this information is the password. What's this? Is it a map? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. Oh. The mesh spreading over the stone like blood vessels on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. Very pedantic. Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes. Students with their textbooks open. Studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. <laughs> what am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. What's with eight? Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split <laughs> into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Whoa. So we're dealing with something medical here? This must be an elaborate piece of art, of course, narrow your eyes, the uh, anatomy of the curse. <laughs> elaborate piece of art? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled The Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. What? Wait, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. Whoa. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. Radio. I was thinking maybe I have access to a radio somewhere. I don't know. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass through the Game Master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station. It looks like. Call in station. Ooh, I do have access to a telephone. All of this is gone. Left unrealized. Oh. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Lieutenant leans closer, his fingers tracking the maddening rhizome. The schedule. I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. It would be cool if I could open it, though. Oh, what do you have to say? Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Looks like an undercover counterintelligence program. It's just a failed business. The only question is what the hell were they making? Hmm, it could be undercover counterintelligence program with a cover up. No, that's not it. Damn it. I think the lieutenant takes a step back, ste steep steepling his hands. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it, make it work on radio computers. Mm. Utter madness, okay. he thinks. As a compliment. I thought maybe because of the trying to get rid of all the other beings that are not Welkins, maybe that was code for something. I don't, I don't know. How were they planning to do that? Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messina, Königstein. You know, places with industry. Mm -hmm. Not in Revachol West, among the ruins. But I don't think anyone has attempted to create an inter game before. We just don't have the technology. How are they planning to do that? I don't know if I should ask all of this. Wow. <laughs> and this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those Welkins are a dead giveaway. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the Wii World board game, with heat death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real. Immediately. Immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. Heck yeah. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Okay. How do you? How were they planning to do that? Through call-in stations. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game, as long as they have a two-way radio. Mm -hmm. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories. 
functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Wow. Indeed, it's ambitious and untethered from reality, but... The lieutenant tilts his head, thinking they weren't sane if they thought they could do this. It was just a play to cheat money out of their investors' pockets. The curse got them. I see no other explanation. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. Do we have any money? Let's give them to... <laughs> no. I don't know. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. I don't know. The curse got to them. Ah, yes. The doom of bad business practices. The lieutenant looks around the derelict room, the pipes howl, and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, let's keep moving. Nice, I got XP for that. What's this? A calendar? Scribbled across a notebook, developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe! <laughs> cool. Oh! What's in here? Money and magnesium. Money gained. I have 26 real right now, guys. I am ri- It's the bear! I found the bear! But first we look at this. What is that? A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. All right, central furnace. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Agony. Kim, what is this thing? It is- Is it a furnace? Look inside the furnace. Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. Oh no, the poor rats! Look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to oh, each other. Oh, can I eavesdrop from here? Near the smoke chamber. Upstairs. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm hallucinating. I hear the murderer of the hanged man talking. I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? He looks up Should the investigate. See if someone's upstairs. Smear your hands with coal? Why would I do that? Kick it with your foot? Smear your hands. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin. Beautiful. Sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. Just as intended. Perfect. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grad, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face in war paint. Hadramut Karzai, smear your cheeks black with coal. <laughs> no, let you express. Let's not express ourselves. Let's just wipe our hands clean on our pants. No, war paint. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks. Telling stories of your wild soul. Yes, I'm wild. Wild one. What? What are you doing? I am the reincarnation of an ancient... Ilmaran warrior. Nothing. Wipe your face clean. Sorry, that was stupid. <laughs> reincarnation of an ancient warrior. Please wipe your face clean, officer. Kim, let me play a little bit. No, you're a proud warrior. Keep it. Don't wipe it. I could. I could fail it. Kim trusts you? I don't want to fail my trust in him, though. I really like him. Don't wipe it. These three stripes give you strength in this dangerous <laughs> realm. It would be foolish to remove them. We're exploring this dark place and I need the protection my war paint affords. And this protects you. This is traditional wall paint. It will grant me safe passage with the spirits that guard this place. It gives me confidence and that's all that matters, Kim. Okay, sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Kick it with your foot? No, th that's gonna alert people. Leave. I got a level up. Nice. Cool. What's that? The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. What's that? An ice cream maker? Defrosted and unplugged! Oh, I want to make ice cream! Ice cream, yum yum yum. What's that? The flashlight casts, casts a strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. <gasps> oh, well, what can I do? Can I just walk in there? Oh, sweet! 
Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Damn it. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look around the secret room. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. He points up at the rifles under the ceiling. Look, there's a hole in the wall. Shine light in the hidden compartment. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. My gun? Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Look inside. Yes. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs. Ew. Rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! Are these any good? Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable, like the rest. But one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. Take the rifle. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. The lieutenant notes his, with approval his eyes are gleaming. What does this mean? A rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. Yeah, maybe next time if I need a gun, I have one. He likes this find. Me too. Good stuff. Can I do more? A few bricks have fallen off. Okay. No. Reveal. Sorry. Sweet. What are you? No, what, what? Oh, 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 okay. The frozen ice cream maker that's still running. I want to make ice cream. Money! <coughs> Healing gained and money gained. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads off into the darkness and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Oh, maybe I can plug it into the, 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 the ice bear Freezer. Don't rip the red one out. You'll awaken the ghosts. Unplug the giant red cable, unplug the black cable, leave it. I'm gonna leave it for now. More money? Ooh, insane mesh tank top. <laughs> Sexy. Intercom wires running into the breaker box. What's here? Oh! Oh, we open this up now! Awesome! This is a shortcut. This is great. Okay, we gotta go and investigate the one thing that I was avoiding the entire time while I was here. This. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. This is creepy. <laughs> the bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? Crack open the door. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. Wow. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax came as the fridge, remember? Look inside the refrigerator. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. This is clearly the fridge. It looks big enough for two corpses. <laughs> nice, we can make another one. <laughs> Take the note from the door. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. Okay. What is a giant bear-shaped figure, fridge, sorry, doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. Uh, so they try to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. <laughs> what is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. Yeah, because it's uh, running. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. This is clearly the fridge. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough, too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. Continue. Your visual confirms you could fit two more bodies in the ice bear fridge. 
Two more, so three even. Shall we go and get the body then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. Okay, let's do this. Clap your hands. The body is heavier than you expected and stinkier. It takes half an hour to get it down to the bedroom. Then, ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Oh, God. Beautiful. A dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best body's work I've ever done. <laughs> All right, really? You think it's good work? I'm not sure I believe you. Of course you don't. Look at that. What have we done? <laughs> we stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge. This does not leave this room. <laughs> I think this is a glorious achievement and people need to hear about it. We did our best with the means at our disposal. Yeah, I'm not proud either, but we did find a fridge. This isn't police work, Kim. It's art. We're artists. And this was our vision. <laughs> I think we did our best with what we had. Did we, though? Okay, maybe we did. We did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. True. Now you can conduct another inspection under controlled circumstances. Ooh. Inside the icy realm of the ice bear fridge, the corpse stands slumped. Okay, so I could put some stuff into perception. Search the body one more time. Okay, perception, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, we need more perception. Let's go, see what happens. Close the door? Am I gonna close it for good? Try to remove the dead man's boots again. Tell me something, dead man. Back him. Take him away, Kim. No, I'm gonna close the door. Hopefully I can open it again. Yep. And what is here? What's, what's going on? Close. So, what do we... What do we need? More perception, right? Let's see. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. Reaction speed. Nope, nothing. Nothing? A lot of nothing? It's a shame, is that? Okay. I mean, I can save and try. Nothing to lose, do I? The bear's eyes are still glowing red. It's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. Okay, let's try. You touch the <sighs> dead man's body. His skin is cold light blue and silvery in the light of the fridge. You still have no idea where to begin or what to even do with him. Damn it! It'll come to you sooner or later. At least he's safe here until then. Are we done with this place? What's here? This is, oh, this is the stairs. Okay, never mind. All right. Can we do more with this? A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace. Color. No. Okay, where was the exit? Up here. I need my bag. But it did cost me some morale. This lady is up here. Can't talk to her though. Alright. Maybe we can try to save scum. I don't really have anything else to do, I think. It is... 2.13pm on day 2. So, lots of the things I can't do anyways. Hmm. Yeah, let's try. Hey lady, can we talk? <laughs> exactly. Okay, have I leveled up already? App apparently I have, yeah. The bear's eyes are still glowing red. Your arms reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh, first with your fingertips, then under the palm of your hand. 
What is this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a spider, your hand crawls over his features. Everything is silent. Crawl up his nostrils? Put your finger in his mouth? Crawl up his nostrils? They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Push your fingers in his nose? Only the little one fits. The flesh changes shape as you bore in, searching for something in the cartilage. The thing you're looking for, it's not there. Crawl out, spider. Put your fingers in his mouth. You. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, Blech. lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Play with it, it feels right. Open your eyes and look. No, touch something else. You're on the right track. Open your eyes and look, I, I don't know. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your naked hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from the throat and there in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate. What? You see a hole barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. An abrasion collar. This is what we're after. Say abrasion collar. Abrasion collar. The collar, uh, the lieutenant looks in. There's a pen in his hand. His notebook is open the cop at the copy paper. Touch it with your finger gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the wound. Put your finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth, right into his brain stem. Am I still wearing my, my gloves? I hope I'm still wearing my gloves. I think I don't. Damn it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> you. <laughs> Were you putting your fingers, Liz? In places they've never been before and they will never return to, hopefully. Feel around first. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again. Never wake. Push deeper. Your fingers slide into the remains of his limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. You. The slug-like structures are damaged too. The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. There is a cavity cut right between the hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further. But the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Oh god, I have to wriggle in. There's no opting out. No. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper. Until you feel it on the tip of your finger. What do I feel? Sharp serrated material. The edges cut right into your skin. Shit, I feel a solid- it cuts into my- I'm in- uh, I'm in the decomposing brain of a corpse with my bare fingers and something cut into my skin now. My inner monk intensifies, oh god. I feel a solid object right under the skull. Can you- can you get to it? He searches his pockets for something, inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. Oh, God. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. Oh, God. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. 
Interfacing, fish it out. Fish it out! Yes. I fished it out. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... I got it. Good, good. The fridge in the background buzzes with excitement. Slowly pull your fingers out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth, covered in blood up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower, a blossom made of lead. The blue. From the Union. The... I forgot the name. The forget-me-not? Or something? The... the that's, that's their, like, sign, right? That's their logo. A bullet. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the lieutenant puts a small back marked evidence under it. Drop it in. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, A non-caliber. Rifle. Some kind of brittle alloy. Fractured on impact. Can I have it? Keep it, Lieutenant, as a gift. Can I have it? Hmm. Of course. You've earned it. The Lieutenant drops the bag in your bloody hand. It feels light. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? High velocity, temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. He underlines the injury forcefully. Sounds like heaven sounds about right. Opinion, fatal injury. Goddamn right. Agreed. Wasn't that what we thought the last time? Agreed. And one last thing. We should amend injury number three. Ligament mark. New opinion? Non-fatal. Post-mortem. Treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of yeah, death. Yeah, me too. And the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. The ligament mark, the fractured hyoid... Boin... <laughs> hyoid... Hyoid... How do you say this? <laughs> hyoid bone. <laughs> it was all treatment. Yes, and the belt around his neck. The hanging. Even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Yeah, I think so too. You think so? Agreed. Aren't we jumping to conclusions? Could be. They could also be... He could also be having, like being hung up there and then somebody did a mercy shot with really good aim, but I don't think so. But are we jumping to conclusions? I have had this doubt since I inspected his hands, officer. There were no signs of struggle. No claw marks on his neck. Why? Why didn't he fight for his life? Maybe he didn't want to live anymore. There have been other signs too. Small details. Everything is too neatly designed for us to assign probable cause here. As we did, foolhardily. Well, no more. No more! We almost fell for it, he thinks. Almost. Almost. There is, of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. Maybe they just shot him while they hanged him? <laughs> to put him out of his misery? It's possible, but it doesn't explain all the other dubious things here. Lack of struggle, primarily. I may be intellectually sloppy, but I prefer one theory at a time. And this just smacks of treatment to me. Who would do this? Why would anyone do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? So, the Hardy Boys... They're trying to protect somebody, right? Somebody else shot the guy. And they, as a group, try to protect that person. Maybe the woman that supposedly was raped by that guy? Maybe she shot him as revenge and, and as an act to protect her from the consequences of her actions? They 
as a group stood up and claimed they killed him together or something uh, i don't know i think i need to wash myself here maybe the bullet holds answers yes we should take a closer look at it i am certain it has more to tell us yeah continue this little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it i think i need to wash myself oh you really really do i am glad to hear you say that <laughs> your room in the whirling in rags should come with a bathroom be sure to make use of it in the evening in the evening maybe how about right now <laughs> what happens next we bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema i can transport him to processing myself but i will be gone for the rest of the day you'll be gone what is what i should what 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 should i do in the meantime all by myself work on the case tend to personal matters try not to do anything too dangerous an officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this I, I, all by myself, all alone, without you to protect me and, and stop me from doing crazy shit. Are you nuts? I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. <gasps> I got a verbal pat on the shoulder from Kim. Nice. I'm feeling good. After you bag the corpse, Lieutenant Kitsuragi will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side tasks and even the main case. But it might be more difficult. Plan his exit accordingly. Try to remove the dead man's boots again. Ooh, I can tell him to go, but no, I c then can't remove the boots. Okay, let's close the door. We we did good. Good detective work, guys, right? Good detective work. And let's try to remove these bloody boots. We've the done everything we could. Are still glowing red. It's I thought we decided to leave it oh, to damn it. Okay, so you can sneak out of your room, maybe, after he's gone to sleep. So I just don't tell him to to bring him away? <laughs> I don't think I need those boots, guys. I don't think I want these boots, boots actually. Tell me something, dead man. Let's bag him, take him away. The lieutenant takes the body away. You work alone for the rest of the day. I'm scared. I don't want to be without Kim. I like Kim a lot. I don't want to be alone. Interact. Book la fumée. The front of this quarterly journal features a large satirical portrait of the late King Friso. From the sides of his head, a pair of white antlers spread to the corners of the cover. Flip through the pages, see what catches your eye. To your disappointment, there aren't any full-color pictures to direct your attention. Just column after column of closely set text, interrupted occasionally by little doodles in black and white. Oof. After rifling the pages with your thumb several times, you return to the table of contents. The magazine is divided into several sections. International Development, Kunst und Kultur, <laughs> and local concerns just inside the cover there's also an editor's note <laughs> sorry because th this is german uh art and culture <laughs> and he just butchered that <laughs> Kunst. <laughs> that was just funny german pronunciation six out of nine <laughs> kunst und kultur that's how you say it ah oh, awesome i read the editor's note comrade as you know this journal takes its name from Mazov's immortal expression, Du Cristal a la Fume. This was his way of describing the way the rigid, crystalline structures of capitalist ideology turned to smoke under communism. But like the structures of capitalist ideology, we too are at risk of going a la Fume. Unlike many publications which are content to spoon feed their readers reassuring drivel, La Fume is committed to telling the radical truth, even when that truth may drive away potential subscribers. Only four issues in, and it sounds like they've already alienated their readership. So please, if you value our radical Mazovian perspective on contemporary politics, culture, and international affairs, please consider subscribing today. Yours in struggle, the editors. <laughs> Yours in struggle. Kim, I think this is a communist magazine. What do you expect? 
It was laying around the office of the Debarders Union. They are probably bankrolling the thing. Okay. You flip back to the front of the magazine. The table of contents unfolds before you. <laughs> I love how I can like whisper stuff to him like, oh my god. <laughs> I want to catch up on international development. What is Kunst und Kultur? Let's, let's hear that again. It takes a moment, but gradually it dawns on you that Kunst und Kultur must mean arts and culture. Yeah. Why they decided to title this one section in Valda is beyond you. It evokes a sense of recognition and fellowship among those privileged enough to understand. As you leaf through this section, you come across several reviews of recent radio plays, as well as a brief artist spotlight featuring a local artist identified only as C.S. Cindy Skull? The main feature, though, is a long essay titled Tip Top Tourne, a critical Mazovian perspective. The Tip Top Tourne is an inter isolari racing series, mostly known for its high speeds, ludicrous sponsorship deals, and high death toll. In Revachol, it's held quadrennially on the prestigious Zero Carousel racing circuit. Read the profile of CS. This so-called artist spotlight is really just a brief Q&A, made all the briefer by the subject's evident hostility to her interviewer. Her hostility? Sounds like Cindy, all right. Let's see what these communists have to say about Tip Top. Sounds dull. Turn to the table of contents. I don't know. You flip back to the front of the magazine. You the catch. table of contents unfolds before you. Ah, oh, it's, it's fine. I don't know if there's, in the end, anything for me to, to do. Can I? Oh no, I still need this, right? All right. Mm. I could do a few things while Kim is away. But if I tell him to take the body now, one of those things that I could be doing, like taking the boots away, is gone for good but i think i'm good with that actually so maybe we just tell him to bring his body away still glowing red it's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly let's bag him kim take him away the lieutenant takes the body away you work alone for the rest of the day all right he takes out a shiny black body bag and starts pulling the plastic over the dead man's face there go those beautiful enamel boots you will never own the full set now may they rest in processing. <laughs> yes. I will need a little help carrying him. You take the hands, I'll take the legs. Oh boy, that again. Let's do it. Back the corpse and drag it into the motor carriage. There we go. <gasps> All by my Wash off the death smell. You reek of death, wash it off. There's a bathtub in your room and the boiling in racks. A good place to visit once you can have some privacy. Yeah, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do exactly that. I do not. And I can't stress this enough. I refuse. I do not want to run around reeking of death. No, no, no. <laughs> no! Quickly. Not sp spending too much time close to humans before they actually, like, <gasps> Or the death. I think it would be more. Or the, or the more. Bathtub. Go wash yourself. Copper. Oh, what's this? Words fail to describe how rank it smells in here. They should have sent a poet. <laughs> you don't make it nicer with your death smell. This is not the cleanest bathtub in the world, but it's cleaner than you are <laughs> right now. <laughs> Makes sense. Ah, that soap scum smell. It smells like life, at least compared to you. Run yourself a bath. I want to live forever with the corpse smell, memento, mori and stuff. No, no, we want to we want to be washed. The bathtub slowly fills with water. The water beckons. Undress, close your eyes and submerge. The water is only lukewarm, but still comforting. Like amniotic fluid. A few beer cans are bobbing up and down along your flanks, like sad duckies. Why did I not remove the empty beer cans? <laughs> Bloody hell. You feel nice and lonely, and so, so tired. 
Take the beer cans out. Now you are alone with your thoughts in the tub. But it's easier than being alone with your thoughts outside the tub. Linger in the tub for a while. Imagine something. Ooh, imagine something. You see the corpse. You can still smell the cadaver on you. Uh-oh. It's going to take more than one bath to get rid of that stench. How about we take some soap? Then, houses along a narrow street. A video rental. Darkness on the planet's curvature. I'm kind of scared that... I mean, Kim is not here. What if I just drown in my bathtub because I was thinking? I can't save. Uh-oh. All right. Linger in the tub a while. Your fingers grow pale and are covered with tiny whirls as the water cools. All right. Conclude. The water line recedes as you stand. You are cold now. Your clothes stick to your still moist skin. Look at me go! Getting all the XP today. I have... I have level ups. Let's go... I don't know what to use them for. I could look in the... in the ledger. I still want to open this bloody door here. Hmm. Is there anything I could do? I could take a nap, maybe. Done. Okay, so now, what are we gonna do? Because it's one of my things on my list. Why, why am I not closing this bloody door? <laughs> I'm gonna go here, guys. We're gonna do the thing. We're gonna do the thing. There it is. A brave little army in your pocket. The first smokes platoon. Twenty brave souls standing in salute. Ready to step into fire for you, sir. Pull one out of the pack. You picked the best one. This soldier is fat and succulent. What are you waiting for? Light up. Rebecome yourself. I'm just gonna smoke a cigarette. It's not gonna be as bad as being absolutely wasted. Oh yes, Bratan! Please light up! You need a trooper between your lips right now! Calm your shit down! Go to Pleasure Land! Become a genius! A genius! <laughs> light it up. I don't want to light it right now. People are watching. Light it up. Get a load of this rock and roll cop Hell here. yeah. Johnny Thundercop fishes a cheap lighter out of his pants. <laughs> With a flick of the thumb, there's fire. A primal satisfaction. Here we go. I can't get no... Satisfaction. The lighter's dark green disposable plastic. Safety's off. In your case, the safety is always off. What are the repercussions if I do this? Dip that bad boy in the flame and breathe in. The repercussions is losing health, but I also gained something. I already know that. Dip the bad boy in the flame and breathe in. Thick, warm smoke gets sucked down into your lungs. Immediately, you feel a warm nostalgia fill your head, body, and soul. A nostalgia for yourself. The man you were in your youth. Johnny Thundercop is back, and he's chill as balls. <laughs> chill as balls. Substance use smokes Astra. Task complete. Find smokes and smoke them. Gain experience plus 30. In the bottom right corner of the screen, there's a cigarettes button. Cigarettes gives plus one to intellect skills. Logic, rhetoric, conceptualization, visual calculus, encyclopedia, and drama. This is good before a white check, but damages your health. Mm-hmm. So, intellect skills. So we want to maybe go now and do anything. I don't know how long they last. So maybe if I quickly go now to anything. Intellect. Which color was intellect? Drama? This. This blue stuff. But I can't do anything now. Whoops. All of those are, are not, not there. Okay, look at us doing, doing business and getting shit done, guys. Okay, and this is actually... Whoa! I can't, I can't even scroll anymore. This is how much I got done. Maybe someone else knows something. The smoke on the balcony. Buy phone pants from Kuno, sing karaoke, get hold of a set song on tape, explore the whirling, find a way into the secret passage. Who made the call reporting the crime? Keep searching for the caller despite lacking any obvious leads. 
This might take some time. The victim to the twos. Who could I ask about that? I've never seen anybody with that. I don't know if I have to have these things highlighted so that dialogue options would be available. Hmm. Joyce's info on the lynching. Maybe if I go talk to her now, maybe she has some more intel for me. About stuff. Also... No, what? There, here we go. Okay. Mm. Now the question is, where was... Where was Joyce? Somewhere by the water, somewhere in this area, I think. How do I get to her? Along this way? Move it! Move it, Mr. Cop boy! Oh yeah, oh yeah, we get in there, we get in there, oh yeah. All right, let's talk to Joyce and see if she has anything to say. Anything You're new. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? By the way, I've talked to Ivra Claire. You have? And how did you like Mr. Claire? I didn't. He's a beautiful man, beautiful and just. Ivra Claire is a hero of the workers' movement. He is the champion I've sworn fealty to. He is a bloated rainbow socialist. I can do business with him. For a socialist, he's reasonable. He is not the champion I've chosen. I wish to swear fealty to you and the cause of capital. It's not important if I liked him. I was doing my job. Of course, detective. Excuse me for implying otherwise. Mm -hmm. I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. Vroom. However, if you felt like passing some information... How could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be... Gossiping. Gossiping? Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. Kinda. Yes, your disgusting necktie agrees completely! Let's gossip! Let's gossip. I'd rather talk about something else for now, if you don't mind. Of course, detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Hmm. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? Do you know anything about these tattoos? Ah, lovely. I was hoping that she would know something. That's the man who was killed. Yeah. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So you... Now, so you know something about the tattoos. Better not tie the fourth day to the back stay on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from... Bloody protocol. Tell me more about the strike at the harbor. Uh, do you know something about these tattoos? Already asked that. About my missing batch again. I'm afraid I can't say any more until we've taken care of formal protocol. How do I negotiate my way out of this? Feelings Damn it! Will guide the way. But madam, I need to know about this lynching. It's very important to me. It's the case I'm solving. I assure you, it is no small matter for me either. We all share the responsibility for disarming this situation. I hope you have a badge for me as soon as possible. You don't understand. It's not like a side case for me. This is my main thing. You have so much else. I have only this. Spread your hands. This is the entirety of my existence. She's silent. The wind flaps the sail. <laughs> Damn <her>. it. <laughs> this boat, for example, and a home somewhere. I only have this case. Officer. The carbon fiber hull creaks. I don't remember anything except this lynching. There's only this coast and this lynching. This case is what I will be known by. You know, I don't mean to sound cold, but if you want something, you have to give something back. More than just guilt. Mm, true. You're doing it. Despite your own best efforts, you're still getting in. Somehow. I'll be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something tangible. Like? The Union is conducting drug trade out of the harbor. It's an open secret in Martinez. Surely it must not come as a complete surprise to the RCM either. Perhaps it's time to look into it. Or... You can find your badge, which honestly seems like a lost cause. Hmm, huh. tell me about this alleged drug trafficking. It's quite straightforward. Someone is using Terminal B to smuggle raw ingredients from the Samaran Isola into Revachol, with the Union's blessing. Wild Pines has suspected it for years. Okay, what kind of ingredients are we talking about here? 
Meth and dextroamphetamine, GBL and various synthetic psychedelics. Honestly, it might be quick to say what you can't make from the stuff. Okay, let me get this straight. The materials come from Samara, Samara to Ravishol through the terminal. Yes. After they clear the terminal, we lose track. The actual production is taking place at various sites in and around Jamrock Quarter, north of here. And you want us to investigate, move on. Yes, but you won't get anything out of Everart and the Dock Workers Union. Still, every chain has its weak link. She raises her bony finger. Maybe if I go talk to Leo. The handoff. The motor lorries at the roundabout. The lorries. Precisely. Someone needs to move the ingredients from the harbor into the city. Once they reach Jamrock, they're distributed to a network of local manufacturers well beyond our grasp. But in transit, they're vulnerable. How convenient that they're stranded like beached whales at that roundabout. Perhaps you've noticed that a number of lorries are tangled in a traffic jam at the roundabout just now. Mm. Interview the drivers who are still hanging about. One of them might be waiting for a crucial shipment. She gives you a knowing look. Her irises are light green, like the river Esperance in bright daylight, upstream where it's clearer. Yeah, not, not like this. <laughs> I'll be explicit. If you find this driver, I will share company secrets with you. Okay, continue. Uncovering union secrets could also give you an upper hand when dealing with them. All right, why didn't you come to RCM earlier? We did, on more than one occasion. Apparently, there's some sort of inter-precinct disagreement about whose jurisdiction this area falls under. Mm -hmm. That's not really my area. I just want to get to the bottom of this. Well, she smiles. Here's your chance. Points towards the roundabouts. There's your chance. It's no coincidence that the lorries are stranded here like that, is it? No. We asked East Motor Track to raise the drawbridge. The road company is a partner of one of our subsidiaries. However, she pauses, looking to the sea. This is a limited time opportunity. Once the complaint has been processed by the trade committee, they'll have no choice but to lower the drawbridge, and the operation will continue. Oh, another time sensitive thing. Uh oh. Thousands of liters of raw ingredients will pour onto the streets of Revachol. Not the east across the river, but the west. The vulnerable, the weary. What proof do you have that the union is involved? How do you think they're financing this strike? There are thousands of unpaid dock workers going strong for the fourth month straight. It's true they drove a number of the local businesses to bankruptcy preparing for this venture. I've talked to a few business owners. It was quite the shakedown. But the contents of a few cash registers cannot provide for 2,000 men. So you think the strike is being funded with source ingredients for drugs? Precisely. Smuggled out of that very gate at night, most likely, then loaded onto lorries and driven to Jamrock. You simply need to find one driver who will open up to you. Uh huh. We already have some suspicions that one of the drivers was present at the lynching. The two might even be connected. Hmm. I've made up my mind about the smuggling investigation. Proceed. Actually, let's discuss something else for now. I made up my mind. Yes? I look into it, probe the driver, see what it yields. Excellent. According to my reports, there are at least three lorry drivers lingering near the roundabout. Hopefully one of them will know something. Lorry drivers, okay. Continue. It may come to nothing, or it may just blow the case wide open. I suspect the traffic jam won't disperse for a few more days. You should have the time you need. Okay. In the meantime, let me know if there's any other way I may be of assistance. She takes another long sip from her seemingly bottomless thermal cup. All right, thank you. Wow, so someone's been a little boring. What? No, I'm not. Get out of here. Get out of here. I don't want to indulge in all these th thoughts because sometimes they literally just take your morale or your health or whatnot, and I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Nope. 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 All right, we go into the lorries. Let's see. Let's talk to him. Hang on. What was this? The jam mystery. Interrogate the drivers about the smuggling. Oh boy. Maybe I should wait with this until until Kim is back because he sometimes has really good insight. But what else could I do? Smoke on the balcony? I have to do this alone tonight, sadly, because I sent him away. 
Check down your gun. Explore willing secret passages. Reporting the crime. Victims' tattoos. Draws info about the lynching. Who put the clothes in the trash? Takes a while. Check down your badge. Find money to for rent and pay guard. I have the money. Let's go and pay guard. Can I help you? About the bill for tonight? Got the 20 real? Yeah. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. Okay, goodbye. Okay, that is one thing off my list. Done and dusted. Lovely. <gasps> the lost bull. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. We got this. We got this orb shaped metal thing that we can give to Renee and the jolly fella. And hopefully they will forgive me for my deeds. <laughs> and won't hate me no more. I want to talk to him though. Renee is angry. Officer, the mere sight of police in Martinez makes me feel safer already. How can I help you? I wanted to ask you about the union again. Bye for now. Wait, 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 wait. Where's my option? Hang on. Goddamn ticker <laughs> vigilance officer anything you tell me about what can this old carabineer do for you <gasps> i found you guys a new bull hold out the ball what is this how are you mocking us this isn't for betonk oh no now now no need to get angry again rene i'm sure the officer tried his best it's not like there's a bull kiosk here in martinez yes Exactly. And I really did try. <laughs> Trying is worth as much as is accomplished. In this case, almost nothing. You can play with it. Don't be like that. Fine. You try to write a wrong. It's still a gun better than actual nothing. Exactly. What is it about this old soldier that makes him stand so proud? Threw the bull in the sea, replaced the bull. No, Rene's job situation. Composure. I don't have enough. Is there anything you can tell me about this rifle? It's a Bell McGrave. 4.46 caliber. Breech loading. Revachal made. Good weapon. Accurate and reliable. Reliable. Okay, good. This one's inoperable. The bolt spring is missing and the mechanism is jammed shut. Still a beauty. Where did you find her? In the basement here, pointing the bookshop. Sorry, I can't divulge that information. What do you mean, fine? This is my rifle. I always have it with me. I can't divulge that information. I understand. Unfortunately, I don't know what else to tell you. These BMs are an antique. No one uses them anymore. The ammunition is impossible to find. Damn it. Okay, thank you. I was hoping... I was hoping it would still work. Apparently it didn't. So I could either repair it or maybe sell it. Let's talk to him about the options he had about this uh, Marie Beau something. Officer, the you mentioned Jean-Marie Beaulieu. 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 Who is that? Oh, sweet Jenny. She was the finest woman in all of Revachol. Maybe the entire world. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That must have been one gorgeous lady. Do not defile her memory, Gaston. Let her rest in peace. So you both know her. We knew her. All right. Lived on the same street our entire lives, just two houses apart. The three of us have been best friends since we were four. Oh. She was Rene's first girl back when the prick was 16. <laughs> they were courting till he decided he'd rather die for some great ideal than just be happy. And then you stole her from me. Okay, so... The, the three of them were friends, he had a thing with her, and then he went off to war, and then he snuck in and did a little bit of loving with her. Oh, easy, fellows. No need for this to get ugly. Do not intervene. Sorry, but I really want to ask her some questions. Yeah, did you, don't, this hasn't... Did, this hasn't asked... No, no, no. Easy, this does not have to get ugly. Oh, officer. It already got ugly nearly 80 years ago when the three of us were just learning to walk and talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gaston is unfazed by the outburst. You stole her from me. René repeats, trying to steady his breathing and still clutching his chest. Well, technically, 
You stole her from me. Because we'd been pretty close ever since you two had that falling out over the ink you spilled over her pretty yellow dress. Oh, René. No. We were just boys then. This was different. You. The tall veteran looks at you and nods. No point starting this all over again. For the thousandth and the first time. Especially when we have company. Officer. What happened to her? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. Oh no. It was a quiet passage. Peaceful. He smiles faintly. No. Honey and I were both by her bedside when she... He pauses, searching for the right word. Died. No use sugarcoating it. Won't bring her back. Will it now? He sharply fills the silence and adds. Mm. Departed. Mm. Until the very hand she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. And you two are friends? How? <laughs> what the heck? BFFs, huh? Yeah, that's interesting. They share everything, even the woman they love. <laughs> what do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry. She was always leaving one of us for the other, but never long enough to actually get married. You two are idiots. A woman like that? I mean, she might have been nice, but she was toying with you. I would have dumped her, both of you, and then I would have moved on. Nothing wrong with weighing your options first. That's a bit odd. Heck, technically, we're both still engaged to her. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. Whatever tickles your pickles, guys. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. Seduced her with your fancy words and pastries. Seduced a woman with fancy words and pastries. Guys, if you ever struggle with the ladies, words and pastries. You heard the man. He suddenly remembers you are still there. <laughs> Falls silent and turns away. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Of course, officer. Memories are all we have left. Let's talk some more about Jean-Marie. I wanted to ask about the union again. Looks delicious. No, no, bye-bye for now. This is fine. I got another level up. Let's go. All right. Um, let's see. Maybe we can do something. But I am literally scared. Electrochemistry. Impossible. Do you think I have a chance if I go to the mirror and level up electrochemistry? I have a feeling I should maybe skill physical instrument and just try the other things. There's three different ones with physical instrument. Maybe I should do that. Just like this. The ones in white you can already try again. Okay. We could do that, right? We could. Goody. Then let's go to the barbell thing. That was down this way, right? I'm a bit scared doing the things without my, my partner. I miss Kim. This is scary. This is very scary. Ooh. Barbell, barbell was here somewhere, right? Wait, have I ever been up here? <gasps> I have not. <gasps> I missed this area. An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like a bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into a colossal industrial chimney. Chimney! Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chili. This is directly above the central furnace in the cellar. The voices probably came from here. Oh, I'm gonna leave it because... Or maybe I'm gonna forget about it if I don't do it now. Damn As it. As before, this is direct. Knock. What an odd thing to do. Nothing happens. Knock harder! Still nothing. Knock no even harder! Home. Those curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. Ah, freak. There must be another way to wake up whoever is in there. Maybe you should talk to the lady in the bookstore. Ask what's going on. Ooh. Okay, what's that? Bent metal. Broken glass. Your path lies strewn with the broken forms of everyday objects. <laughs> you are the destroyer, the bane of inanimate matter. Gaze upon me, stuff, and despair. No, I'm just a disempowered individual trying to take my disempowerment out on everyday objects. Yeah, I rip shit apart. <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> I got a thought that I can think about, right? This is... I'm oh, still in the project. Um, thingy boom bops. Learning cap for pain thresher race to six. Compressor. I want to learn more of these. Hmm. Damn it. Okay, what's this? 
The floorboards creak. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. All right. La Delta 51. Come on, move it. Yeah, I totally missed this one. Uh, oh, can I go up? Oh, have I been in here ever? Oh yeah, I definitely have been in here. I remember that. Oh, thoughts thoughts are happening. <laughs> Smells like leather and sweat. <clears throat> okay, we save. Before we hurt ourselves. And then we try this. Hang on. Let's heal. The barbell waits patiently on the floor like a dog for its master. My head hurts? Why does my head hurt? Wait, hang on. Leave? Let's check my outfits. Maybe we have something that would add to something something. Antique bell, Magraf rifle. Hmm. Okay, check the clothes. Physical instrument, perfect. Okay, do we have anything that removes physical instrument? Not really, okay. The barbell waits patiently. 28, okay, floor, let's go. Like a dog for its master. Green? Did I succeed just now? <laughs> Smooth. Oh. Oh. What's happening? Conjuring up an inhuman amount of strength, you raise the barbell up in the air. Your biceps tremble, but you're a savage. This is a children's game. Oh yeah, I'm a true champion. Say nothing. Revel in the feeling. Oh yeah. Healed morale? <laughs> I am super mutant! I am the unstoppable! Wave of accomplishment Sorry. washes over your head as you drop the barbell to the floor. <laughs> For a moment, it feels like you're strong enough to succeed at anything you ever set your mind to. Heck yeah! Hey, but you're still in the ghost house. What if someone heard this? What if they know you're here? Leave. Okay, we did the thing. Awesome sauce. Now, what's next? Trash container, physical instrument. Is that where... Okay, we're gonna do this, guys. We gonna do this. We gonna do this now. We are gonna run out of here. Lost my bearings. How do I... Where do I go? Have I been in here? Yeah, okay. This is this place. All right. And then we go and we, we beat this bloody thing up to a pulp. Where do I need to go? <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> we could maybe open the ledger and just pass time and then go to the smoker guy because Kim is gone no matter what. He's gonna return tomorrow morning, so I'm not really using uh, losing any time here. So maybe... I said maybe it's gonna be the time. Um, maybe we just, you know, inventory items. Uh, was it interact? Ledger. Ah, okay. It takes about half the an hour. The unsolvable case. To, AKA Leslie and Burke. AKA the public indecency drunk and the property damage drunk. Is that me? It's a cursed case. It has been passed from unsuspecting officer to unsuspecting officer for 10 years. 10 years. On January 29, the unsolvable case made its way to you. Whoa. Why you accepted it, it is unclear. Every officer, and indeed most civilians in general, know it's unsolvable. Unsolvable, guys. But we will solve it, hopefully. Leslie will always take his pants off when he's drunk. <laughs> Burke will always trash everything. It's just what they do. It is their nature. Okay. You cannot change the nature of a man. And you can't lock them away. Because public indecency and small-scale property damage are not punishable by incarceration. The only way for Leslie to stop flashing his genitals to bypasses and for Burke to stop dismantling signage and rear-view mirrors would be for them to stop drinking alcohol, which, in their 40s or 50s, 
It's hard to tell because of their distorted features. There's a medical improbability on par with you ceasing to produce the expression. Oh, can we just keep them off the streets? You would think that, but you're wrong. Where's the fun in exposing your genitals or breaking stuff in your own home? Yeah. No, Leslie and Burke are on the corner of Main Street and Perdition because that's where the action is. The action, they want to be seen. Can you keep yourself off the streets? Proceed. Threatening, fines, dragging them to the station. Locking them up in the hell holes they live in. Locking them up in the station. Hypnotherapy. Even trying to get the local gang of Zemiaki to take them out. The Zemiaki gave them ethanol, so Burke and Leslie would expose and rampage even harder. <laughs> you tried it all. And still the complaints wouldn't stop. As they hadn't stopped for ten years. Ten years? It's plain to see from the files that you, Satellite Officer JV, and Special Consultant TH, had more important cases to attend to. You uncover cross-reference to several ongoing investigations, each brought to a standstill every time you drive down Main Street. Because there they are, on the corner of Perdition. And what is Leslie doing? I think exposing himself. I want to make sure. Yeah. Good. You're learning. If the files are to be trusted, that's all there is to it. That and Burke breaking things and the fact that they're both drunk. But then again, so are you. The case becomes considerably less comic one day when Burke takes a swing at your ledger. Oh, what? He must have it confused with the property he likes to damage. But the joke's on him. You're drunk out of your mind on potent Pilsner. You slam the hardened plastic board in his face. Then you proceed to beat him unconscious with it. Oh, Lord. In the process, the ledger sustains damage. The compartment within, reserved for permeable documents, is jammed shut. You stop your assault on the now unconscious Burke to open it, but are unable to do so. The officer began to cry reports Leslie, who, at this point, is tending to Burke. Oh, boy. He came at us, and at us. I think he was trying to kill Burko. While trying to kill Burko, you slowly come around. The permeable's compartment is open. You've smashed it open on poor Burko's kneecaps. The good news is, Burke can't walk anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> can't get out of his apartment, an invalid. With Burke to tend to, Leslie cuts back on the indecent exposure. Maybe he flashes his genitals to Burke. Who knows? But both drunks are off As a the substitute. Street. The complaints stop. The unsolvable case is solved. Nice. Which is also why the officer responsible narrowly escapes a disciplinary hearing. The end. Do you want to read another one? Ooh, maybe we should. Maybe we shouldn't. Oh, come on. One more. The square bullet hole murders. It would be very interesting to read about these, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. I mean, there seems to be a square-shaped entry wound in the victim's forehead. She's been sitting there for weeks on her rocking chair with a square hole in her skull, staring at the wall, her mouth agape. For weeks. Ugh. Okay, but That's all you got. From the half hour you spent piecing it together, all you know is the entry wound was square shaped. You never found the bullet. And then another body showed up, also with a square hole in his forehead. Whoa, sequence killer? Who knows? Those pages are missing. What next? Continue. Don't worry. One day. One day? One day you may still catch the man with the square gun. Square gun? Holy moly. The couch? In an unexpected location. Some assholes brought their couch outside and hung out on it. In the middle of the street, on the roof, on the hillside by the motorway. You know, at an unexpected location. They were young and they thought they looked cool on it. Yeah, super cool. They actually looked like assholes. They looked really cool, like models. They looked really cool, like a rock band. They really looked like assholes. Insufferable dicks. Yeah. Young people are the worst. Yeah. So anyway, you got a complaint about the damn sofa or couch or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, I never know the difference either. Okay. They were leaving it out in all these unexpected and whimsical locations. They took it to 
where they also took photos of themselves on it and smoked cigarettes and drank coffee because they felt it's intellectual. Fair enough. Cigarette butts, coffee cups, stupid couch. You had to clean it all up, and you did. So congratulations to you. Case solved. Did I ever catch those guys? No, you didn't have time for that. These notes show that you have what is called a real goddamn job. You don't have time to be chasing down the couch assholes. You have a real job to do. What next? I'm gonna read the next one too. Murder at the hookah parlor. Murder. Tum tum tum. At the hookah parlor. <laughs> tum, tum, was a tum. case originally assigned to an officer called Joseph Mills, who is now dead. Oh no. Of circumstances completely unconnected to murder at the hookah parlor. Wait, how? Beaten to death by a throng of Villa Lobos gang members when him and his partner, J.M., only initials mentioned, answered a call one night. It's a sad story, and it isn't really represented in your case files. Stop stalling and get to the murder at the hookah parlor. Tam, tam, tam! Right, on with the murder. Joseph Mills was on this case that he just couldn't solve. Was doing it solo. Said it was a real nutcracker, a real brain twister. Was on it for, like, a month. The captain got impatient. Shit or get off the pot, Mills. <laughs> Mills mm. didn't get off the pot. Not yet. Nope. He kept at it for a couple of weeks more, racking his brains, running with every theory as outlandish as they seemed. Still couldn't solve the murder dun, dun, at the Uka parlor. Tough case, he said. Toughest he's ever had. Wait, was Joseph Mills a good cop? No. He was awful. Oh, no. Awful sense of humor, too. Oof. The worst jokes you've ever heard. Really rapey. Ooh. Still. He'd been on it for months now. Said it was the final case. Said it was uncrackable. That murderer vanished into thin air. That goddamn hookah parlor was all he talked about. Okay, go on. Okay, so the case is handed to you because Mills isn't getting anywhere. And you look into it. Here's the setup. A young man is found dead in a hookah parlor. You know, those places where you go and smoke bubblegum flavored vapor all day. Mm -hmm. Can you get high off of it? No, it's soot and water vapor. It doesn't do anything. Really stupid. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> young man in his 20s found mm -hmm. with his skull busted open. Oh. Right on the floor of the hookah bar. Oh no. In the middle of the day. Whoa. No one else is in there. Only client that day. In perfect health too. Some kind of movie producer. I mean, of course, per I mean, j uh, perfect health? Apart from his skull being cracked open, but okay. No one enters. No one exits. He's just sucking on his watermelon hookah all morning, all noon, like he usually does. Okay. He's a regular. Uh-huh. No calls, nothing. Just sucking on the hookah until 1545. Then bam. Bam. He's dead on the floor with his skull busted open. Blood everywhere. What a mess. What happened? How can it be? Somebody shot him? Mills has no idea. Invisible assassin. Movie deal gone sour. Girl at the counter did it. Nothing fits. Eerie. Man just dropped dead. So you go to the parlor. You see cushions around the table. Tables low, heavy, really sharp edge. He sucked hookah, stood up and passed out, hit his hat on the table and died? See? You can't even read the thing without solving it. Yeah, it was that. Turns out hookah does do something. It turns off your brain's oxygen supply, and you don't notice it until you get up to go to the bathroom. He must have sucked a lot of it. <laughs> and what was he doing there for six hours? He must have sucked a lot. Yeah, he liked his hookah. Stephen was his name. Oh, man. And what was he doing there for six hours? Smoking hookah. Didn't you hear? Like, nothing I else? I don't know. Trying to come up with a movie script, maybe. Anyway, that was murder at the hookah parlor. Joseph Mills wasn't a good detective. No. And about 30 minutes has passed, piecing it together. Next. But we don't have next. This is this is it. I can't revisit this. Not much has changed in okay, the Okay, put meaning. the ledger away. I can... Oh. 
Thought complete, white morning. And the little guy gets smaller and smaller as you rise above the dollhouse world. You see him out in the snow, on the streets, in the shop, on the corner, and finally in a matchbox house, sitting by the window, white flowers on the windowsill. You can smell them from up here. It's awful. A white morning. A modern death. Divorce or something similar. All you can do is put more distance between you and him. Make him smaller. Make him less you. Okay, all motorics learning caps raised by one. Uh huh. Okay. So I can forget these to free up a slot. I don't know if I should unlock all of those. Head in the clouds. Hmm. Maybe I should remove some of those. Intelligence and Psy red checks failure heal plus one morale. Hmm. Fizz and Mod red checks failure heal plus one health. All endurance white checks unlocked learning cap for endurance raised to four. Bonuses from the thought learning cap for perception raised to five. Speed gives plus one Psy. See, speed as in like, ooh, whoa. White warning. 20% zoom out distance added. One motorics learning. Okay. I think maybe I should forget this one. These look like they would be unlocked, but they they have to be. These look like they're locked for good. That's weird. All right, guys. So it is 6 p.m. in the game right now. Almost 6 p.m. in real life for me, too. So I think this is a good moment for me to call it here. We do have a few things to do in about three hours in the game. I should be going to the balcony where the balcony smoker guy lives, knock on his door and have a conversation with him. Sadly, I will have to do that without Kim. I don't know how to proceed from here and like spend another three hours. Maybe I can go and do the investigation with the lorry drivers tomorrow. <laughs> Use three hours up in that way. Maybe I should go take a nap. I don't know how long napping takes. Maybe napping is like... 30 minutes, maybe napping is like a few hours. I don't know with my guy. So I guess we can do that. All right, guys, I'm going to save it here and we will continue with this tomorrow, hopefully making more progress. I, I got some progress done today. We discovered new areas that made me very happy. I like making progress. <laughs> and it was funny bits too. And I'm so happy that this bloody body is now down from the tree. I don't like what I had to do for it, but I'm happy it's down nonetheless. <laughs>